when we take a transverse view of a muscle, what we're going to see is something that's oftentimes described as a starry night appearance. We see the dark background of the muscle fascicles and interspersed between them are bright fibroadipose septa. So if you look at this view of the thumb and you look at the muscles of the thenar eminence, you're going to see a very dark background with the bright speckled tissue within them that represent the fibroadipose tissue. And when you look at the muscle in its long axis, you're actually going to be able to see the fibroadipose septa of the muscle. They will be running lengthwise along the muscle. You'll be able to see the pennate pattern of the muscle in a healthy muscle. When we view the tendon in its transverse, it appears very much like a cable that's been cut. We can see the fibular pattern as bright little dots within the tendon, as we're seeing here on the flexor pollicis longus tendon. Now let's look at the tendon in its long axis. As we turn the probe into the long axis of the tendon, we now can see the bright fibers of the tendon in their long axis. We see this fibular pattern as described earlier. Lest we forget, ultrasound is a dynamic modality. We can have the patient move, or we can move the patient, or we can move the probe around. It's not a static imaging modality. So I'm going to have my patient bend his thumb at this point, and you'll actually see the tendon moving. Next, we're going to look at an image of the bone. Bone is highly reflective of ultrasound. Consequently, it's going to appear very bright, looks almost the same as it does on an x-ray. But the big difference is, is that ultrasound doesn't actually penetrate bone. So what you see beneath the bone is actually shadow or reverberation artifact. And a reverberation artifact will simply look like a series of bright lines that will extend below the ultrasound beam. Here you're looking at a long axis view of the patient's first metacarpal bone. Next we're going to look at the nerve in its short and its long axis. The nerve has a honeycombed appearance, a, an appearance that we call fascicular. We see the fascicles of the nerve as dark spots and we see the surrounding fibroadipose tissues as bright. If we turn the probe into the long axis of the nerve, we now see the nerve as having a railroad track like appearance, such that we see the dark fascicles of the nerve and the bright fibroadipose tissue now in their length. Next we're going to look at what a normal artery and vein would appear like. This is also an excellent opportunity when you're learning to scan to practice using light pressure versus heavy pressure with the probe because it can have a significant effect on what you're looking at. Here on the image we see arteries and veins. They are anechoic structures. Anechoic meaning that they don't send back a sound wave and consequently they appear dark on the image. If you apply heavy pressure to the probe, fluid is moved out of the way, and a vein is a typical example of that. If I apply slight pressure to the probe, the vein will collapse, leaving the artery visualized as in this image. As I apply a little greater pressure, it produces a sphygmomometer-like effect, where you'll see the artery pulsating. And this is one way that you can help to differentiate arteries from veins. Another way that you can look at this is by turning on color or power Doppler. On this image you'll see blood flowing within the artery as a pulsatile flow. If I squeeze the patient's hand we'll now see blood flowing in their vein.